Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of College Town Talk. I'm Jonathan Frank, here with my co-host Shan Stout. And Shan, I, I've got a riddle for you. What do you get when you mix a local newspaper publisher turned restaurateur and an Amazonian scientist? <laughs> oh, I'm not very good at riddle riddles. I'm hoping that we're going to get some great dinner recipes out of this. <laughs> Close. Uh, you've got today's podcast episode. We're talking with Jay Albright, the publishing powerhouse turned owner of Seven Senses Food and Cheer in Cookville's West Side. He's also a proud Tennessee Tech alumnus and the new chair of the board of directors for the Cookville Putnam County Chamber of Commerce. Then we're joined by Tennessee Tech alumna, National Geographic explorer, television personality, and chemical biologist, Dr. Rosa Vasquez Espinoza. She has dedicated her career to protecting the Amazon jungle and teaching others about conservation and sustainability. And it all started right here in Cookville with her tech degree in biochemistry and molecular biology. I'm amazed by these two intelligent people on today's podcast. I'm a little bit intimidated and you know meeting a national geographic explorer has its own list of questions now i think our listeners are really going to enjoy these two conversations let's go ahead and kick things off with tennessee tech alumnus and local business leader jay albright Now, we all know that you can't be a great college town without a great restaurant scene. And being director of tourism, I know that all too well. Well, Cookville, good for us. We have that covered in ACES, thanks to people like our next guest. Jay Albright is the owner of Seven Senses Food and Cheer, and it is a definite fixture on Cookville's historic west side for more than 10 years, and it is a favorite of visitors, tech students, and Cookvillians alike. But more than that, he is also a proud two-time Tennessee Tech graduate and longtime supporter of the university. He is a community leader, former newspaper publisher, and he's also the 2024 chair of the board of directors for the Cookville Putnam County Chamber of Commerce. So Jay and I get to see each other quite often. Jay, welcome to College Town Talk. Thank you so much for having me, Shan and Jonathan. I appreciate being here. Now, Jay, for our listeners who don't know you, which are very few, I'm sure, before you became a restaurateur, you had a long background in newspaper publishing, which I believe was something of a family tradition. So, in fact, your father was the former publisher of the Herald Citizen, which, of course, is our local newspaper here in Cookville, and was posthumously inducted into the Tennessee Newspaper Hall of Fame. What an honor. And you were the longtime associate publisher of another local publication, the Upper Cumberland Business Journal. So lots of newspaper heritage in your family tree. Tell us about those years and what made you decide to add restaurant on top of everything else you've been involved with? Well, I get that question asked to me quite a bit, actually. Um, uh, the Cliff's Notes version of my past was really back to my, my family history. My parents were in newspapers pretty much their entire uh, professional life. And it, it just came natural for me after I got my MBA degree from Tennessee Tech to go into the family business and uh, really enjoyed uh, learning the newspaper business. I spent 25 years in the newspaper business um, in one way or another and uh, really enjoyed that. Um, the, as you mentioned, the Upper Cumberland Business Journal, I, I was involved with that for probably close to a decade, um, was in the family business until um, newspapers started seeing a little bit of a decline uh, back when uh, the Great Recession hit in 2007, eight, that range. And um, my parents got out of the business at that point. Uh, they, their timing was impeccable um, before the recession hit and things started really going downhill. Um, I was able to um, transition sort of into the business journal at that time and then also a little bit into um, a, a, a few tourism magazines that I had actually. Shan, you, you may or may not know that. Um, but I actually had some tourism magazines that featured Dale Hollow Lake and Center Hill Lake and Big South Fork and Fall Creek Falls, the name four of them. And and uh, and then I got this harebrained idea to start a restaurant. And uh, and and in in doing the restaurant work, 
Um, it, it took all my time and I wasn't able to continue with the tourism magazines the way that I really wanted to and needed to and had to let those go. So the long and the short of it is um, the restaurant world kind of took took uh, priority um, when I got into that about 10 years ago and the rest is history. Jay, let's talk more about that restaurant world, as you say, because I know that owning any small business, but I would think probably especially a restaurant, can be challenging work. We've all read the statistics about businesses that don't work out, but Seven Senses has stood the test of time. Uh, you have survived a pandemic, uh, economic shifts, and celebrated your 10th anniversary last year. What did that milestone mean to you? And uh, what do you think has been the secret to Seven Senses longevity? Uh, personally, I think it might have something to do with a smoked pork queso. <laughs> well, I always enjoy hearing uh, people's favorite items on the menu. That makes me feel good, especially things that have been on the menu for a long time, like the smoked pork queso. Um, okay, I'm jumping in because the salmon is also outstanding and your appetizers I can't not get them. So, no. you know, I can go in a restaurant and resist the appetizer for the extra calories and say no, but I've never not ordered appetizers at Seven Senses. So on and on, it's fabulous. Well, thank you so much, both of you. Uh, that And that's really what it's all about. You know, um, we we uh, when I started Seven Senses 10 years ago, it was all about giving back to the community. And uh it, it wanted to add to the quality of life scenario in, in downtown Cookville, especially here on the west side. And and, and the, I think we've done that. You know, the restaurant scene, the, the entire west side district has come so far, even in the past 10 years, and really little to do with seven senses. But hopefully we help kickstart that a little bit along that period of time. And everything's come uh, just uh, miles and miles ahead since that time. And, and now we're kind of the local entertainment district of, of Cookville, which is which is amazing. Um, as far as standing the, the test of time, um, I would attribute that to a couple of things. One in particular is, uh, is really um, uh, listening to our community and what their needs and wants are. And first and foremost, you can't just come in and start any business and just assume that everybody's going to like it and you just do it your way. And you, you kind of have to do it their way especially in the restaurant business. And so we we did a good job of listening. Uh, and then the other thing is really just taking care of your primary assets, which are your people. And if you don't take care of your people, um, you don't have a good business model. You don't have a good, you don't have good business success. And so it comes down to taking care of our people through the years and making sure that we remain as consistent as possible. I love that. And you, you live that every single day. And I, I actually know the people that work for you and what they think about you. And they've been there, a lot of them, a long time, which I think that speaks uh, to, to how you do managing your business as well, because it is a business and the food's important, but also how the food gets to the customer is important. And uh, we recently, Jay, had uh, 17 international tourism operators come from five countries. And when we walked them past your restaurant, because it was earlier in the day, so you weren't open yet, and we were telling them about you, and they put their hands up to the window so they wanted to see inside, and they're like, this is wonderful. This is amazing. You know, your restaurants are so nice. And so you were a symbol of what the West Side has to offer. And they were just so impressed with how everything was so beautiful. And we were able to speak to how delicious your food was and the atmosphere. But, you know, Jay, you also don't like to brag on this. And we're going to brag for you instead. In addition to having this amazing restaurant and helping the vibrant economy of the West Side. But you are a two-time Tennessee Tech graduate. You've been a supporter of the university for many years. You've consistently given back to your alma mater, big and small. And why is this important to you, this this particular philanthropy, giving back to tech? Well, it, it you know, ever since I moved to Cookville with my parents back when I was four years old, um, Tennessee Tech has been synonymous with Cookville and the Upper Cumberland region. So um, I think first and foremost, it's only natural to want to be a part of that in any way that you can. Me going to school there for six years total, four as an undergraduate, two for my MBA degree, um, Tennessee Tech's important to me. It, it, it did it did a lot for me, but but it's it's such a cornerstone of our entire region. And if you if you don't take care of the community that you live in and you're a part of every day, uh, including those cornerstones, 
then I feel like you're not doing your part um, to to really be a valuable asset of your community. And so I, it's, Tennessee Tech's a natural fit uh, for all it does for our community. And um, and, and I, I wouldn't have it any other way. I, I love Tennessee Tech and proud to have it as my alma mater. Well, Jay, we've established uh, during this interview that you are clearly someone who likes to stay busy. And you just added another role to your portfolio. As of last week, you are the new chair of the board of directors for the Cookville Putnam County Chamber of Commerce. Uh, why did you want to serve in that capacity? And what do you think has been the impact of the chamber on the business uh, community here in the Upper Cumberland? So, Jonathan, I would argue that that the chamber is another one of those cornerstones of our community. Um, the chamber has always, or, or at least since it was established back in the 1960s um, here locally, um, the chamber has always been so heavily involved in everything that the community is all about. All the positives that happen in the community, very few of those things are not related to the chamber in some way. Um, a lot of times the chamber or Shan at the Visitors Bureau, or they're, they're working behind the scenes to make things happen. Um, they don't always take the credit for those things. And um, me serving in the role that I am as, as chamber board chair now, um, it's frustrating sometimes to not be able to stand up and take the credit because we know the work that's going on behind the scenes, but, um, but it's prudent to give the credit to other people sometimes. And so... Um, anything that I can do to be a part of helping our chamber succeed um, is just a, a small part of what the chamber is all about in the first place. Um, and, and I'm just I'm thankful to be a part of that. My, my real my real roots, as far as the chamber is concerned, go back to my father, who was involved with the chamber for years um, back with uh, the founder of our local chamber, Eldon Leslie, and then with George Halford after that. Um, and they were all they were close friends. and. Um, Dad did a lot of chamber work, including serving as board chair back in 2004, exactly 20 years before me now. Um, and as far as I know, I believe we're the only father-son uh, board chairs uh, in the in our chamber's history. So it's just it's a special thing for me to be able to be a part of it, uh, to serve uh, alongside Amy New now, and to help her push everything forward. And then people like Shan and others who are who are really doing the hard work behind the scenes. It's just uh, it's very fulfilling in so many ways. Well, Jay, it, it's an honor to have you at the helm. And I love that you followed in your father's footsteps. And I know that that's that's a big deal to your family as well. And speaking of family, my son is a culinary student and he wants his dream is to open a restaurant one day. What advice would you give to maybe the students at Tech who are interested in going into a business such as uh, becoming a restaurant owner, um, what what are your tips from uh, having a life uh, that's been very successful in this arena? So uh, the, the first thing, and this pretty much goes with any business, but I would say being in the restaurant business for 10 years, and I hadn't been in it before that, and so I had to learn a lot. Um, do your homework. The, the first and foremost uh, advice I would have for anybody, do your homework and and don't just cram it in and do it right because uh, the the restaurant business is extremely complex. Um, I thought newspapers were hard. The restaurant business is even harder. Um, and I, I would go to re other restaurant owners and seek their advice, uh, the pros and the cons. Um, I would absolutely just gain as much information as you possibly can about your community and and who you might be serving and what their what their desires are. Um, and uh, just take it all in because if you're not doing that, you'll do it the way I did it, which is the hard way. And that is you take two or three years to actually get it right before you start reaping the benefits. And you don't have to take that long to do it right if you know more than what I did when I started. So that 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 would be my main uh, my main piece of advice, that, and what I would do differently if I were doing it all over again. Well, I'm I'm a firm believer in finding mentors and modeling after their success, so you can avoid the pitfalls as much as possible. I think that's very very solid advice. Now, finally, Jay, we like to end each interview with the same question. What is one way that Tennessee Tech has impacted your life? The this and that's easy for me to be honest. Um, I I enjoyed my years at Tech um, and and learned a lot, obviously. 
the, but the main thing that really stood out for me about Tennessee Tech and how it impacted me was going to MBA school. I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do with my professional life at that point, which is one reason I did stay around for MBA school. Um, and I was enjoying going and playing golf every day, which was nice. But um, but the MBA part of it, the, the being a case-based um, uh, curriculum, it, it brought me um, out of my shell and into a comfort zone when dealing with people, whether it's groups of people, whether it's uh, classmates or uh, colleagues or whatever, it really brought me from being sort of a more of a shy, introverted person to being more comfortable, being able to do the things that I need to do in the business world, whether it's talking in front of groups or or just handling normal management activities. Um, and Tennessee Tech provided that for me in a in a great way. Probably wasn't even the direct intent um, of, of what they were doing, but, but being, being, getting comfortable with writing papers and, and communicating those papers verbally, um, that, that made all the difference in my, um, ascent forward from there. Jay, thank you so much for being our guest today on College Town Talk. Thank you so much to both of you. Um, appreciate you letting me uh, share some thoughts and, uh, wings up. And for our listeners, visit Seven Senses Food and Cheer Tuesday through Saturday at 32 West Broad Street, right here in Cookville. You can see our next guest on National Geographic, or you may have caught her narrating the Science Channel television series Secrets in the Jungle. Or perhaps you saw her national daytime talk show appearance last year on The Tamron Hall Show. Or maybe you saw her work earlier this year on the cover of The New York Times. Dr. Rosa Vasquez Espinoza is an award-winning Amazon jungle scientist, National Geographic explorer, sought-after speaker, and host, and the founder of Amazon Research International, a nonprofit organization based in Rosa's native country of Peru dedicated to protecting the Amazon jungle. For her research and conservation efforts, Rosa has received numerous accolades, including being named to the Explorers Club list of 50 people changing the world. But before she did any of that, Rosa was a student right here at Tennessee Tech. She graduated in 2015 with her degree in biochemistry and molecular biology and was a proud part of Tech Honors, the university's honors program. We are so excited to talk with her about her work today and her years living right here in Tennessee's college town. Rosa, welcome to College Town Talk. Thank you so much, Jonathan, and thank you so much for that very, very, very kind introduction. I appreciate it. And it's an honor to go back to my alma mater virtually. We're honored to have you here today. We, we got to start out by asking you, you have been all over the world. As I understand, you're originally from Peru, but you now live in the United Kingdom. You travel all the time. You're going to be traveling again in two days. So I've got to ask you, how did you find your way to Tennessee Tech University in Cookville, Tennessee? That's a great question. I originally knew I had to go study abroad when I learned that the career I was looking for at the time, which was molecular biology, plainly did not exist in Peru. Now that has changed, which is really exciting for any upcoming scientist, but it didn't exist by then. And I wanted to have experience working in the lab. And I applied to a bunch of universities, to be honest. And I remember seeing TTU having such a welcoming international program. And I had never been to Tennessee. I didn't know what it would be like, but I just kind of went with a hunch that it seemed so organized and welcoming. And they were so quickly at responding any of my trillion million questions that, and they were really kind to give me a generous scholarship and that's what brought me there. Now, Rosa, you were obviously a standout student here at Tennessee Tech. And in fact, you decided to give yourself an added challenge by being part of Tech Honors. And that's, of course, the university's honor program. Now, you built a close rapport with many of the students and the faculty there. And in fact, I heard a rumor that Dr. Rita Barnes, the director of the honors program, even attended your dissertation defense last year via Zoom. What a big deal that is. Now, we caught up with her recently and she was raving about you as a great human being and one of the most amazing people, which I can see that very clearly. This is not shocking to me at all. 
what was the impact of Tech Honors on your experience while you were here at Tennessee Tech? So lovely to hear that. I genuinely enjoyed the Honors Program, and Dr. Barnes was just such a big part of it. I The reason why I got attracted in the first place was, one, I remember they were very creative in the books that they encouraged us to read and really facilitating discussions around books. And I that's my jam. I absolutely love this very creative thinking, which sometimes in different classrooms, you have to focus on the topic um, and that really allow for interdisciplinary mentality. So I love that. And we were able to go as deep as we felt like in the discussions. Um, and then also, I remember there was this component of allowing us to have flexibility to come up with a project that we could carry out in the town. In my case, it was focused on service, but that also allowed me to combine my passion for dance at the time with getting involved with the community, which was a really important part of what I do now. So I think that experience through the honors program really helped shape that early on. You you just alluded to the work that you do now. So let's let's talk a little bit about that, Rosa. Uh, obviously, you've made protecting the Amazon rainforest and teaching others about conservation and sustainability uh, really your life's work. Where did that passion come from for you? And what do you find most rewarding about your work today? It really started from growing up in Peru and having what I now realize is the luxury of being so close to nature and outdoor spaces like the jungle, the mountains, and, and being so close to that indigenous wisdom that a lot of our communities have. And not just really in Peru, the more I get to travel, even within the United States, I get to connect with that traditional knowledge of communities and civilizations that existed for so long and that really inspire many of the creative ways of reconnecting with nature nowadays. And so it was that that initiated that curiosity that I wanted to get a little closer to nature through science. I didn't really knew what that meant at the time. I just knew I wanted to get closer. And during my time in TTU, I had the chance to experience multiple labs, multiple courses, which really just started to fit in into my thoughts as to clarifying what I could do later on. And something that was really important as well was that I took opportunities every summer to apply for internships or to complete some courses abroad. And during my senior year, so the last summer before graduating, I had the opportunity to do a traditional Chinese medicine um, internship in China, which was extraordinary. And all my mentors and, and teachers at TTU were really supportive of. And I think that helped consolidate that idea that I wanted to get closer to not just help illuminate and expand areas in nature that we don't know much about, but really making it a mission to protect it. And nowadays, I find many aspects of what I do is satisfying and, and really soothing. But I think one of them is the fact that I get to work with a lot of classrooms and seeing how these newer generations are growing you know, with the worst impacts of climate change compared to compared to my generations or other people's, but they have so much more hope than perhaps the media sometimes shows. And I think that just in, like, gives me the energy to keep working uh, for this mission. Well, Rosa, I, I've noticed that one of your big words is curiosity, and you seem to be the embodiment of someone that really believes that knowledge is power. Now, we know that you're not doing all of this for recognition. You are obviously very passionate about your work, but you've gotten plenty of recognition anyway. As Jonathan mentioned earlier in the introduction, just this year alone, you've been named to the Explorer Club's list of 50 people changing the world. 50 people. And you had your research profiled on the cover of the New York Times. Just those two things make me unworthy to be interviewing you in this conversation. You are amazing. Now, what has that recognition been like for you? Because you seem like a very humble person who literally your goal is to change the world one person at a time, exposure, awareness, all these things. Do you feel that it's helped to get others engaged in taking on these issues by 
your recognition and exposure. I appreciate it. That's it's beyond kind what you're saying. It's been a wild ride. I have to say, I did not expect that those two things to come kind of back to back. Um, because we've we've been doing this work for years, and many of the times you don't get anybody really paying much attention until then somebody does. Um I think the most important resulting like factor from all of that is that yes, we do get more people just asking the question, oh, what are in this, for example, stingless bees in the Amazon, or I didn't know about these other parts of the forest that I didn't even know they existed or that they are also in danger and getting uh, a lot of young native people. In my case, I'm from Peru, getting a lot more uh, younger girls and boys approaching me one way or another saying, oh, this is so cool. Maybe I can do this work as well. Maybe I can also lead these initiatives here, which I think when I first started my journey professionally, that was not really a possibility. And I think that allows others to see themselves reflected and just think bigger, which is what we need to take action now, because there's no time. I consider multiple paths before deciding for this one. And the, the one that drove me to take action today is just because I don't think there's that much time for our rainforest, really. And I think more people are getting to see that, but in a hopeful way. I think that is my mission, not bring another doom and gloom type of perspective, but rather say, saying that there is hope if we do it now and if we do it collectively. Rosa, we like to end each interview with the same question, and that is, what is one way that Tennessee Tech has impacted your life? Tennessee Tech felt like a family away from home. And that felt like a very safe space for me to explore any question that came to my mind. All the professors were very open always to the many ideas I came forward with, whether that was in science or community work, or even just allowing me to think that I had that space to be. And I don't think many places necessarily do that, especially you know, as as we have increased in technologies now that sometimes they deprive us from that human connection. So I think that has been the, the biggest positive impact that I've gotten from Tennessee Tech and helping me have build the confidence to to take on the work that we do now. Rosa, we just appreciate your time today. I think this is going to be uh, an inspiration, really, to a lot of our listeners. Thank you so much for being our guest today on College Town Talk. Thank you so much, Jonathan and Sean. It's been a pleasure, and I hope to meet you guys in person whenever I'm in town next. And really, thank you so much. This means a lot to me. What an amazing woman. Now, for our listeners, learn more about Rosa's work on her website, www.rosabespinoza.com. We want to thank Jay Albright and Dr. Rosa Vasquez Espinoza for being our guests today on College Town Talk. We surely do. And thanks to all of you for listening each week and helping us spread the word about the great things happening right here in Cookville, Tennessee. Join us again next week for more conversations with the people who make Cookville Tennessee's college town. College Town Talk is presented by Tennessee Tech University in partnership with the Cookville Putnam County Visitors Bureau. Your hosts are Jonathan Frank and Shan Stout, and original music is performed by Andrew Buckner. Visit us online at tntech.edu slash collegetowntalk.